You're watching UNICEF television. After losing everything in the devastating famine that swept Somalia, Naima Abdi Karin and her family moved north from Galkayo to Garraway in Puntland two years ago. Her father died soon after they arrived, and her mother struggled to feed the family and was unable to pay the school fees for Naima. However, a new scholarship scheme has given Naima the chance to go back to school. She was awarded the scholarship under the Accelerated Female Participation in Education program, along with seven other girls at Gamble Secondary School. Naima, who's in Form 2, is well aware of what a wonderful opportunity she's been given. I would probably be staying at home if I didn't get the scholarship. Some of my friends who did not get the scholarship are married. Some work at the market or have become housemaids, and others are still idling around. You know, an illiterate and illiterate person are not the same. For instance, I'm being educated and a lot of resources have been spent on me. And when I complete my education, I will not depend on anybody. I'll be self-reliant. The scheme is the first of its kind here, giving 446 girls a chance to go to primary and secondary schools, colleges and universities in Puntland and Somaliland. It's coordinated by the Gender Unit of the Education Ministries, and supported through the EU-funded Integrated Capacity Development for Somali Education Administration project. The scholarships also provide for uniform and books and all the scholastic materials a student would need because this is the first ever scholarship program that tends to the needs of the most vulnerable in society, especially a girl child facing multiple challenges. It has become very, very famous. We have done a research recently measuring the impact of the AFP funds and uh, people are very, very uh, positive about this scholarship. School enrolment rates in Somalia are among the lowest in the world. Only 35% of girls enroll to go to school and 45% of boys. Out of the girls who enroll into grade one, only one in five completes a full cycle of basic education. The others are taken out to help with domestic work or because it's thought there's little benefit in educating girls. Another challenge for the education system is the lack of trained administrators, with many having left the country due to the war. The Integrated Capacity Development for Somali Education Administration project brought in technical advisors from the Somali diaspora to transfer skill and knowledge to new recruits, help reform the education sector and strengthen its capacity to effectively deliver quality education services. Mohammed Ali is a new recruit who was trained on how to use QuickBooks an automated accounting software introduced to improve the financial management and data processes systems in the Ministry of Education. I've done a lot of things for that automated system to work. It becomes the transparency and accountability of the Department of Army Finance. Also, it causes that uh, automated system and to get financial report as easily. The head of finance is pleased with the new system which he says brought in international accounting standards. At the time it was difficult to know the monthly financial report to get. But the QuickBooks is a quick click to get what your payment in the month, what you receive it, and what your balance. All things for the financial records and transactions. Now it's very easy to, to track. The education curriculum hasn't been updated for many years. Abdi Aziz is a quality assurance trainee working to harmonize the many different curricula used in Somaliland schools. We are measuring how the uh, curriculum of the country is related to the environment and how is it appropriate to the level of children in school. Then I, I can measure how the experience of the teachers who are in the school and how they are teaching. And then we are uh, training to measure uh, the textbooks that they are using. Developing an educational database is key to providing evidence-based planning across the education sectors. An education management information system has been set up to analyse data from surveys carried out in Somaliland and Puntland primary schools. The data has been used in equitable distribution of school materials and for planning purposes. 
In the past, there was no order or plan when it came to distributing materials from the Ministry of Education. We were favored because we are close to town and our school is big. Sometimes we could get more or less materials because there was no school data available to guide the distribution. But after the school census were conducted, we are getting a consistent figure. In south-central Somalia, security issues have forced ICDC project activities to lag behind. But with a new government in place, primary and secondary school surveys have been scheduled for Mogadishu. Mohamud Ahmed Rage, the director of planning in Mogadishu, has organized training for those who will train head teachers in the schools to fill in the survey forms. Uh, the image system is now functionally is now uh, functional and it's working properly. We have the equipment there, the software and all the other facilities. Uh, now what we are going to do is the exercise for the school survey. The three-year ICDC program, managed by UNICEF and implemented through a collaborative partnership between the Ministries of Education, CFBT Education Trust and the Africa Educational Trust, has brought remarkable advances in skills transfer and the management of education services. However, continued support is crucial to sustain these key reforms made in the education sector. This is Susanna Price reporting for UNICEF Television. For more information, go to www.unicef.org.